On this episode of Small Business Revolution Main Street, an MMA gym has just opened their doors. I told myself most of the things I knew about boxing. With an owner who puts his passion for coaching kids before his business. How am I supposed to make a champ if I can make next month's rent? What is the actual business going to be? The Small Business Revolution team joins the fight to help keep this dream alive. The business owner in me is having an anxiety attack. Small towns across America are fighting for their survival with the odds stacked against them. But what happens if we join that fight? Small Business Revolution Main Street The second contest. year in a row for the competition. One community is getting a half a million dollar makeover. Thousands of small cities and towns taking part. What started as an idea became a national movement with over a million votes cast throughout the country. And finally, one winner. The borough will get grants, publicity, and advice. The town went all out to win the competition. I know I voted. Now, marketing expert Amanda Brinkman and her team at Deluxe are going to work for the people of Bristol Borough, Pennsylvania. And they brought along entrepreneur Robert Hershebeck and a cast of small business experts to help revitalize the town. This is a story we've been following all summer. Bristol Borough residents hoping for that big boost. Every episode. We'll be working with a new small business, bringing marketing expertise, financial advice, and decades of experience, strengthening the town's economy one business at a time. The team has only a few short months to see if they can change the odds, if together we can start a revolution. I told myself most of the things I knew about boxing. My family were working all the time, so I used to just shadow box in my house and hit the punching bag. And no, I didn't have a coach. We didn't even have gloves. We used to get together on the playgrounds, like a street boxing. Pretty much that's how I learned to box, on the street. As a young kid, I really wanted to be a professional boxer, but I never really had that man in my life to help me. My father was not around. But now I have a son. That's my biggest blessing. And my son loves boxing. Everything I do right now is all because of all the things I didn't have. Everything that I saved went into this place. Literally every penny. And as soon as I opened, it was like, oh man, I got no more money and, and I only got one month to pay. It would be nice if I had like a loan and a budget and a plan, but now it was pretty much like me by myself. Thank goodness for Google. I kept Googling everything because I had to do everything. I'm the cleaning guy. I'm the marketing, the accountant. I set our prices. How did I set the prices? I don't know. I just made them up. From the beginning, I have figured my own way, you know? So for me, it's always been very difficult to accept help but uh, I want to be able to live my dreams and pay the bills. <sighs> Man, I think I need help with everything. <laughs> Ready? Let's go, 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 go. <laughs> You got me. <laughs> Do you have a lot of different classes? Little Ninjas, MMA, Round 3 Fitness, Kung Fu, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, wrestling. With kids, that commitment is really, really tough because I have to keep them safe. I just don't want them to go out there and pretend they're boxing on the street like I did. Somebody would have changed my life if they would have gave me a pair of gloves. Man, I'm telling you, it would have changed my whole life. When I see all these kids in here, I want to give them a chance. I want them to have what I didn't have. But I got kids in here that they can't afford it. They don't have the money, I tell them it's okay. Don't worry about it, you get me when you get it. If I need money, I'll go help friends with cleaning, landscaping, you name it. I'll do it however I can just to keep supporting this, this gym. I'll do it all the time. Because if I want to make two kids happy for a whole month, it only takes me a day to make 150 bucks, it's done. And the kid will appreciate it. Having a coach that, you know, cares about you more than just being a boxer, that means a lot. You know, if I have a problem, I can talk to Jose about anything. He'll give me the positive feedback and he'll, get, he'll be as, as honest as possible. It's, it's just phenomenal to have a coach that I can talk to as a man. It makes me feel really happy to help all these kids. 
But I see down here sometimes, and I see a lot of kids, and I, I'm like, well, that kid's no pain, that kid's no pain, that kid's only paying this much. And I'm like, well, I'm losing a lot of money because I'm being too nice, you know? So I definitely need a business mentality, you know, and stop being all hard. Jose's energy is infectious, and his commitment to those kids makes Keystone an important part of Bristolboro. But this is going to be tough. We don't just have a few areas of improvement to focus on. By Jose's admission, he needs everything. And the business is new, which brings his own set of challenges. So Jose and I are going for a walk along the Delaware River to see if we can figure out where to start. So you're from Cabo, Mexico yes. originally, right? Yes. Okay, how did you end up in Bristolboro, Pennsylvania, of all places? Because of my wife. She's from Pennsylvania, and I asked her, where could I see nice, nice water? Because I miss Cabo. And uh, she took me to Bristol. That was it, I fell in love with it. What, uh, what drew you to starting <laughs> your own gym versus just going and instructing at another existing gym? Me, I, I care. Every time I coach, I'm worried about every single thing in that class. It needs to be perfect. I feel like a lot of people don't, don't put that effort. Mm -hmm. you know, they just take people's money and that's it. I want the kid to come back and with his kids and say, hey coach, hey, this is my kid, you know? Picked you for a reason. Bristolboro is better because you are here. <laughs> it's all about making sure that we can help your business be sustainable so that you can continue to offer that to this community. Yeah, was, Is know, the gym making a profit right now? Uh, no, no, it's not. It, it's not. I love being in there and doing the classes, but uh, I feel like I haven't really been able to become a business owner. You know, I, pretty much I'm an instructor that happens to own the gym. But uh, I don't have that confidence yet to say I'm a business owner. It's tough though because I don't know what I'm doing. To be honest, like financially wise, I'm not sure. I don't know what I'm doing. I, mm -mm. I know that you want to be a champ, we'll make you a champ. I know how to teach them drills. I can get them good sparring. I can do focus mates. I can do anything for them. You will be successful. You come in here, you will learn how to be a good man. You know, you can't, you don't come just here to be a good boxer. You step in here, you're part of my family. I will take care of you. But how long can I last? How long is this gym gonna last? How am I supposed to make a champ if I can make next month's rent? You know, if the facility closes, it's done. The commitment, everything that we work for is done. Is done. So yeah, it's, it's, it's scary, because I don't want to fail them. You can tell how heavily Jose feels that weight carrying all those kids' hopes, it seems like at least a part of our job will be to help him take care of his business the same way he takes care of the people that walk into his gym. Because without that, Keystone won't be around for those kids. So I think the thing we really need to focus on today. With so much ground to cover, we need to bring in someone who has been in Jose's shoes, who has started a gym from nothing and built it into a success. Pete Dupois has done it twice. He now has gyms in both Massachusetts and Florida, where they train some of Major League Baseball's most elite pitchers. And I know he's going to have a lot of great advice for Jose. Hey. Hey, Jose. Hey, Amanda. How are you? Hey, Good. How are you? How you this is Pete. Hey. Jose, it's up, nice buddy? to meet you. How are you? Thanks you want to see your handshake? We have a secret handshake. Let's do it. All right. All right. Okay. Get on there and high five. There you go. Before we get started with the serious stuff, Pete and I are getting a free boxing lesson. You ever boxed before? <laughs> no. Well, you're about to box Amanda. She used to be a professional boxer down in Mexico. She moved to the States. You ready? Yeah, I am. Jab, jab, cross, on there, cross, oh, cross. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Boom. Oh, that was great. That's it. You're welcome. Welcome to the team. All right. Oh, that's nice. it. That's a way better sign it sounding high five than a normal one. I know, right? Well, this is Keystone. That right there is my office. Um, and try not to look too, <laughs> too deep into it. This is your membership oh. agreement? Oh, yes. That. Why did you have, why, oh. why that <laughs> reaction? <laughs> no, because uh, people get confused. We have a nice blueprint, but we just need to make it better. And I don't think that we want to call this Keystone Boxing MMA, because uh, we have Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Right, and then we have uh, wrestling, mixed martial arts, and boxing. And I felt like we wanted to call, I wanted to call it Keystone Combat Sports. But let me show you. Amanda, you ready? Pete, you ready? Good to go. Check this out, this is awesome. And watch this, <laughs> yeah. There's then, no light in oh, here, what are you talking about? We're gonna have all these mirrors on the wall, 
so we can do shadow boxing. Anyways, here's the room, and then that takes us to the other the other place. Can we just go over there? It's it's far away. How far can you go with this? Thing? The idea is to everything be just one, and this is the door. If you don't mind, I can just go open it and then let you go through here. Is that okay? So I'm gonna take it one minute. I'm lying, 25 seconds. You haven't seen this face yet? I haven't. He's like so great. Like I can't even look at him and not like smile. I just like. <laughs> All right. He was timing himself. <clears throat> Let's go. This whole space was too much money. I, I, just, I didn't, uh, but I wanted this from the beginning and this will be all of our the fitness facility. So what amount of this space is included in your current lease? Or would oh. you need to invest more? No, this is a... So you're already paying for the space right here? I'm not paying yet until I finish wor working on that. I'm the one cutting and breaking all this thing myself. So... When? When I got time. I just did this oh this gosh. last weekend. I will tell you that the business owner in me is having an anxiety attack. Because of all everything? You are trying to be a lot of things at once, Jose. So what right now worries you the most about your business? People can't find my spot ever. Okay. That's one. I know the one referrals, because I have a lot of kids in here and I haven't seen them bring friends. Let's say they leave here and they say, I just had the best training session I've ever had at Keystone. And the person they're talking to says, well, I'm gonna check it out. Let me go to their website. Well, that's incomplete. Yeah. Well, let me check him out on Instagram. Oh, he's had three posts in the last four weeks. I think it's really about what Deluxe can do to start getting the ball rolling on making you visible. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about the kind of classes you want to make sure you're offering? Well, boxing is pretty much what this place is. And that's what I teach here. I teach competitive boxing. But not everybody's coming here to be competitive, right? I, and my trade is boxing and kids' classes and fitness. I can teach wrestling as well, but... Um, I have a wrestling coach that I want to get involved because the space is here on Tuesday and Thursdays. I was renting this whole space to a kung fu guy who was supposed to pay, never pay. So now I have Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays. This whole place is open. So now I can bring the wrestling program in. My question would be what, I know that you have a lot of service offerings. Everything. If you say you collected $50,000 since the birth date of your business, okay. of those 50,000, how many of them were boxing related? How many were ninjas? How many of them were fitness business? How many were wrestling? You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. How, how does this pie get split up? All right, so 50, I'll say right now, 50% boxing. Uh, 25, 30 will be um, kids classes, the little ninjas, and the rest will be fitness. So I, I think those numbers are a good way for us to start having some tough conversations. The problem I see with your business right now is that you're trying to be a jack of all trades and master of none. And you kind of outlined where you need to double down. I'd rather see you add a class for people who are curious about boxing than add wrestling. You're right. I think I, think I, I, I'm, I got excited about the building. You see big space, you want to put a lot of different things on it, right? But I think I'm thinking it wrong. Okay, so do we all agree boxing and little ninjas? That's kind of our, that's what we're gonna focus on yes. in terms of offering. Can I, wait, I do have. <laughs> we're in agreement, are you? No, wait, I'm really in agreement <laughs> just because I offer, a, I offer a mixed martial arts program I forgot to mention on Tuesday and Thursday. That actually makes some money. I'm okay with adding it, but my question for you is this. How did we get this far into the conversation Without having to. Before you felt inclined to tell us. Because uh, we were talking about everything else. Before. Yeah, exactly. We were talking about what you're passionate about. Yeah. And it, it, you, well, you, you. Oh, he got you. Thing, <laughs> dude, I'm super passionate about mixed martial arts. I used to compete as a mixed martial artist, a cage fighter. Okay. I teach actually on Monday. I actually opened another class for MMA. That's so weird. I didn't even mention this MMA because right now MMA is actually. Well, MMA. let me pause you on this. You're asking the general public to think of you as the best mixed martial arts, the best boxing, the best kids training. See where I'm going with this? Yeah, yeah I, see, I see it. But when you start really talking, it's boxing and it's your ninjas. That's it. Yeah, so now that we're talking about this, I actually feel very, com I feel very comfortable about dropping everything else. So I feel like for now it's boxing, the little ninjas. I'm Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I don't profit out of them going to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. But so you say you don't profit from Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Hey, do you have an independent contractor who's paying rent? Yeah, Bob Mattis, he takes care of the Jiu-Jitsu program and he does everything. I don't do nothing from Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He's a good coach. He pays 
half of the rent and I'll... I need clarity on that. That's that's huge. Um, so, okay, so you have someone who's helping pay half of your rent and half of your utilities? Mm. In a way, a, half of the utilities, if I, like, if I don't have the money for it, I'll, I'll ask them for half. But when, when, when it... When, Whose name's on the lease? Uh, so all of that is mine, and this is his. So You're you have a business lease? partner? No, there isn't a lease. We're not in the business, we're not business partners or anything. I own the LLC. Well, let me reframe the question. Does Bob carry an insurance policy for his services? I carry, um, I, he's under me. He's under Keystone So Boss. you're insuring him. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you're the one taking the risk. No, it's not like a big risk. It's because we're working together. Um, I know, but you, there needs to be language in place for these things. You are vulnerable. And I'm sure Bob is a good person but we, because there's obviously a lot of trust. I just feel like it has to be so much cleaner than it is right now. Yeah, right? Like either is. Bob needs to be an employee or a he partner? has to assume some of the risk. Yeah, either and a partner or an employee. The next time I come back here, there needs to be an operating agreement in place between you and Bob. Yeah. When somebody comes in and says, yes, this is what you're supposed to do, it kind of makes you feel like, oh, shoot, I'm messing it up. I need to do this and I need to do that. So it was a little scary. All is not lost here. He's gone from zero to one with nothing but an organic reach. He's so much opportunity in front of him for growth. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think just getting him to focus on what are the classes you want to be offering. At the end of the day, they're my decisions. I own the business. If I think it's great for my business, I'm gonna do it. And if I am wrong, then the results will show. You know, they will show. Focus is such a common problem for new businesses, particularly if the founder is good at a lot of things. It seems so counterintuitive to narrow your list of potential revenue sources, especially when money is tight. But covering out a niche is actually the only way for a small business to differentiate itself. So we're gonna keep working through this process with Jose. The next step is a trip to Minneapolis to sit down with celebrity entrepreneur Robert Hershevac and get a sense for which direction the numbers are pointing. I'm excited about this meeting. We're gonna talk about the plans for Keystone Boxing. It should be interesting because Robert's passion is really business itself. He doesn't care much about boxing. He just likes to make things work. Whereas Jose seems like he mainly owns a business so he can coach the way he wants to. Hopefully we can find some common ground. So boxing gym. Yeah, man. And how do you make <coughs> money? Our gym is a competitive boxing gym. A competitive boxer. A competitive so if I'm not a competitive boxer, <coughs> I shouldn't go there. No, you, you, we, you have a competitive boxing program, but a competitive boxing program is not gonna make us our living. That's why I'm asking you, how are you gonna make a living? So we offer boxing in general for adults, and then we have the, the youth boxing. Now, now this is non-competitive recreational. If one of these kids decided to, it look, it's looking good and decides to become a boxer, and then we have our competitive program. And then we have the Little Ninjas. That's a unique program that no one has in, in Bucks County. No one offers martial arts, acrobatics, and fitness all in one class. And if I don't get enough competitive boxers, I can always get enough Little Ninjas. Here's what's confusing for me. Why do you grow to a competitive program? Do you charge them more? No, but we are able to say we have a champion in our house. That's how boxing gyms survive. I get it. Here's my problem with it. I'm not clear whether you're trying to build a hardcore competitive gym where you're gonna spit out a champion mm -hmm. and then people are gonna to come to you no matter where they are. They're coming for you. They're coming for me because I am the best coach to be around. And but but you're around. not a coach. You're not a coach. I am a the, coach. You're not. The minute you signed the lease and set up <clears> the rent, you became a business person. When you start a business, that business is like a baby. It needs to be fed every day. And you gotta know what kind of food it needs. Here's the challenge. You've got multiple gyms. You really do. You don't have one gym. You have multiple gyms. You have a kid's fun gym, you said to yourself. Yeah. Then you have this intermediate who are kind of thinking of going pro, and you have a hardcore gym. You really have three businesses. So I'm gonna give you a dollar. I'm gonna say, it? here's a dollar. I want you to go spend this dollar to get more customers. The smaller you are, the more focused you have to be. So are you gonna take that dollar and are you gonna go after more kids, more intermediate, or more hardcore people? I don't know the population base, but I gotta think there's more people 
that would want to take a ninja class than oh. there are hardcore boxing. Mm -hmm. I do. I believe so. I believe that. I do too. I, I, I'm right now. I'm confused. Am I just marketing the little ninjas more? But I'm still doing my boxing. Yes. I'm still running my gym. Yes, your marketing has to have a, have a more singular <laughs> focus. I haven't promoted that. I've been promoting boxing. But you have to think of the little ninjas as the the thing that makes the business <clears throat> run in order to afford time to yeah. spend on the elite coaching. No, I think I think you're right. I think that that's the way to go, and I'm I'm happy that. You make, you make me feel like um, I should focus on that. But it doesn't matter what we want. We've talked you into this. I mean, let's just be honest. We've talked you into this because I think we made you feel bad. And now you're agreeing with us over here. It, it comes down to what you want. They're trying to figure out what my business is all about. Like, what? Uh, it kind of felt to me like you can't even tell me what you really are, who you really are. You know, it always scares the crap out of me. When somebody comes in, I tell them what I think, and they completely change their mind. Mm -hmm. Because what it tells me is they're not clear. Right, we love the guy, but we can't love get him guy. to like focus. I just need him to be able to tell me what his business is in less than three minutes. You go home and the people that just told you that you might need to rethink your marketing, you might need to rethink this, you might need to do that. So now I'm by myself thinking, Okay, so what the heck did just happen? They kind of shatter your confidence a little bit. I'm like, they need me to be a specific to one. I don't think I need to be a specific to one. I think I can coach both. I've been coaching both. I'm really happy with how my business is run. I'm not changing pretty much nothing at all in my, in my schedule and my classes. I think my boxing program could be as profitable as the Little Ninja. No one likes to look like a fool. No, no one does. I don't. I don't. So is it worth it? Uh, I hope so, you know? When you're founding a business, you must be confident, resourceful. You have to hack your way around problems and piece together opportunities on your own. Most of all, you have to have an unflinching belief in yourself. But those same traits, which are so vital when you're starting out, can make it extremely hard for entrepreneurs to take advice about their business. The last thing we want is for Jose to lose confidence as an owner. We just want to help him focus all that energy into running a sustainable gym. It's tough to think about diving into the marketing with so much still up in the air, but we have a lot to do. So the deluxe team is getting down to work. First and foremost is getting him online. His business is listed on Google, but it's missing hours, a phone number, and his website. Those are the three things that people want to see. He's got a site, but it's under construction. A lot of pages don't have information. This has been the most challenging of the business sites. I'm hearing a lot of different things from a lot of different people, and I think that as he talks to different people, it teases out some new piece of information that sometimes contradicts what we thought was the direction that we were going to go. If I'm gonna be totally honest, I've always had a hard time sorting out what is real and what is aspirational with Jose. He knows exactly how he's different, right? But what you're really asking is like, what's the what? You have about five seconds when someone lands on your site for them to understand what you offer. They're all great offerings by themselves, but they don't really hang together. Talking to him, his focus is on the fun and fitness. A lot of what you're learning is just life lessons, right? It's confidence, it's commitment, discipline, that kind of stuff. So it sounds like we're leading with that. I mean, that's, that's the message we decided we'd take. If I can't capture the business, I at least want to capture the spirit. If we're gonna bring more people into the gym, we need to make sure Keystone and its customers are protected in terms of insurance and liability. A big part of that is getting Jose's relationship with the coach who he shares the space with down on paper. So we hooked him up with Mark Stoley, a lawyer just up the block on Mill Street, to get the gym's legal ducks in a row. Definitely wanna to talk to Bob and see if he's willing to come up with a written agreement while you're friends. So if things go <laughs> south, you know, you have something to rely on. While Jose's addressing one of our main concerns, we're going to try and fix one of his. People don't know where to find him. Even when you go up to his door, you can't really tell that it's a gym. You know, he's got those big windows there, so I think we put the new name on those windows. Putting the name of the business out front is a no-brainer. But first we need a name, and that question is still being answered. I know he wanted to switch to that name, he, uh, Keystone Combat Sports. Yeah, and we had an issue for a number of reasons, but... Very this... little search demand around combat sports. Actually, yeah, boxing has got a lot more search so demand. That makes sense. 
Keystone Boxing and MMA gym is where we landed. But the other decision I think we were trying to get 100% approval on was his logo. So when we shared these with Jose, he had the reaction that something with the glove just wasn't feeling quite right. So we're doing some fine tuning with the glove icon. It felt like in the initial weeks that we were working with Jose, we were trying to keep up with him. But it feels like now we're sort of struggling to try to get some of the information that we need for the website to get decisions on logo design. We don't know what his schedule really is. We can't link a specific instructor to a specific class. You know, really the ball's in his court at this point, but we can give him all the tools that'll help him get there. He needs a computer. He needs the software that'll help him with booking appointments. The one that really sticks out to me is a service called MindBody. He'll be able to do all his books and business from anywhere. But adding some organization to how he thinks about those classes and that structure seems pivotal to what we're trying to do. We know we're asking a lot of Jose. And while we're hard at work at Deluxe, we want him to have as much support as possible. So we set him up with a volunteer from SCORE. They're a national nonprofit that pairs experienced business mentors with new entrepreneurs. And we're hoping that they can help Jose think through some of these decisions together. I usually recommend you develop the business plan and I, we help you do it. We try to meet with you either by Skype or in person once a month. So is it, is it just once a month and that's it? I can so talk to well, you? Because when, when I think about mentor, I'm a big mentor to right. boxers and young athletes. Right. And I'm there five days a week and then Saturdays because I want to see them succeed. You right. know? Right. And that's why I am a, a coach because I'm a passionate coach and right. I want to help them. So I want to know, is, is there any, is, so it's just pretty much a one-time thing and... No, no, it's a continuing relationship. And I get any um, usually we try to meet in person. Come back to me with any questions and then we'll move forward and we keep meeting and it's, it's a service just like that for yes, people? Yes, exactly. That's what we're here for, okay? It feels like something's happened. There's been a shift for Jose where he doesn't seem bought into the process anymore. Communication via phone and email has been a challenge. So we set up a video conference with him and Pete to see if we can get back on track. I'm having a hard time reading kind of your energy. I mean, what's, what's up? I'm not, well, I'm a little confused, definitely, with the whole pro process. I haven't seen that much of our improvements so far. So pretty much right now, I'm like, uh, I've been working really hard on my business and I've been working really hard on paying my bills at home. So pretty much in the same boat so far. So I really haven't really changed that much. Nothing really changed for me so far. It might be a matter of us just saying, hey, let's let's trust the process. And I know that it's a lot of headaches, but your foundation was kind of crumbled a little bit when we came to the yeah. table. But you're, you're making steps in the direction toward the fun part. But we can't move forward with the website or some of these other marketing things that will be wow factor until you make some of these decisions about the classes and the targeting and, and things like that. Maybe I just thought I was going to have somebody next to me getting me excited every time, every minute. Now I'm like, all right, so now what do I do? I'm just waiting on something. I don't know what I'm waiting on. You tell me what's next and I'm excited, you know? I, but that's, I, like, I, but I, I have to kind of, I have to kind of step in there. There's a little bit of this kind of lead pull thing. We're, we're not coming in to run your business for you. So, so we I'm, need I'm to not take I'm ask you to run okay. my business. So I understand you're helping me with little things and that's okay. No, these are big I things that we're helping you with. Of all the businesses we we're working with, we're not helping them figure out their business strategy, their business legalities. We want to help you with those things because we recognize that those were standing in your way of that next stage of success. These are fundamental principles to getting your business in a better place. One thing I've learned is don't sugarcoat it. I'd rather tell somebody the truth, have them be pissed off at me, adjust their business and succeed, then be my best friend in bankruptcy. You fall in love with him right away. All he wants to do is help people become a better person. But in terms of working with him on his business, it's been a challenge. After such a difficult process, we didn't want to lose sight of what drew us to Keystone to begin with. When you walk into the gym, the place is usually packed. And then Jose starts pointing out the kids that are in pain because they can't but they don't want to give up either. And Jose won't give up on them. There are so many of those kids, and the practical, business-minded part of you worries for Jose, but this other part of you loves how devoted he is to his mission. That's the side of Jose we need to show the world, and it's a place we know we can help. So one of the things we talked about was, you know, a scholarship program for him, and him being able to reach out to other 
um, youth in the area who maybe wouldn't be able to afford this and saying, I have an opportunity for you. And it'll start getting more people to, to see what he's doing. It'd be great if we could actually fund some of those scholarships to get the program going. And then, especially after people yeah, see his, awesome. his episode, I feel like people are going to be compelled by his story and what he's trying to accomplish in the community. So I think we could help him keep that scholarship going beyond the initial investment that Deluxe will make to get it up and running. Jose, he's under a lot of stress right now. He's got a lot of payments to make. I think in the end, if we can get him in a better place financially, more people signing up to be members of his gym, I think he's going to see, you know, where this plan is sort of taking him. I was only in a t-shirt because I actually showed up in a suit last time. Hey! Hi, Jose. Hey, Jose. How are you? How you doing? Good to see you. Oh, yeah, man. good to How see you. you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Place is looking great. Thank you, man. Thank you. This looks amazing. The big goal was that people from the outside could tell that yes. this is a boxing and MMA gym, yes. right? The window clings look incredible. I love it. I love it. Everything on the images and the quality, it looks amazing. I love all that. I love it. Boxing, jujitsu, very mm -hmm. clear. Welcome back to Keystone Boxing. It's very I, cool. So pretty much we, this way right here, it's our floor where the little thing just happens. The new sign looks great on the wall. All right, so I thought it'd be fun to show you the website. Okay. okay. This is the way that we tell your brand story online. If you recall with the logo, this was your existing logo, but the, the name wasn't as, as prominent, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So we worked with you to develop oh. this new logo. Part of the reason that we love this so much is we feel like it emulates Simple. kind of the tape that you use on your hands. The other great piece is that this as an icon alone can function really well in social media yeah. when we need icons and images like mm -hmm. that. So you'll see in your website, we made sure that we were designing a site for all of the audiences, but we really wanted <coughs> to make sure that parents understood the benefits of boxing. So here is oh, your new wow. site. Oh, wow. Wow. Tons That's of color. Really good. Most important part right here. There you go. Finally, <laughs> we can see you smiling. That is the brand. We want people to meet you right away, right? So you're prominent on the homepage. We know people love your personality. We want to make sure that that comes through. The ages themselves are part of how we allow people to navigate through the site. So we've got our under eight classes, our youth classes, and our adult. That helps the user right away determine which path they're going down. We also want to make sure people are introduced to the instructors, get a sense for when these classes are, see the schedule. And so um, MindBody has given you oh, software man. for a year. It's amazing, yeah. It's all integrated, right? We want to find tools that make it simpler for you. Oh, it's amazing how to save you so much, so much, so much time. It does the accounting for you in a very intuitive way. It's not like, did that guy pay? Did he mm, not right. pay? What's going on? This yeah. website accurately reflects the look and feel of the space as well. Web presence to on-site. Right. The website reflects our facility. Okay, well, I'm so glad you're excited about the site. Um, we have some other marketing things that I want to show you. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Wow. Very nice. We branded water bottles for you. And again, they're straws, right? Because when you got the gloves yeah, on, you yeah, can't. Yeah, it has you to can't be squeezed, yeah. Yep. You talked about t-shirts. So we got this. We got you a ton of inventory so you can sell them. We'd recommend that. Right. That's an additional yes. revenue stream. Yes. Okay, great like material. Okay, so we got your brand on the front, brand on the back. Got you business cards for both you and Bob. Got the logo on there. Nice, very nice. We also created branded bags. So this is for the little, these are for the little ninjas. <laughs> All right. Okay, don't you love that little yeah, size? I love it. All right, next surprise, sir. Yes. All right, so we ordered gloves. We've got for adult, for use. We've got the masks, anything, yeah. everything you need to run the gym for a whole year. Wow. Okay, it's important to have an iPad for sign in. So we got you an iPad to be able to do awesome. that. Awesome. That was great. Yeah. And we know that you are going back and forth at home a lot because you just have a desktop and you need a laptop here yeah. as oh, a business owner, okay? okay? Jose's a guy that I really want to root for. I think he's come a long way. I worry about him being able to corral all of that energy into focus. I guess the hardest thing is the questions that you guys ask. All these questions like, who, what is this place? What is your service? All these things. I didn't have a concrete answer for that. I think that this has forced him to be strategic about the way he positions his business. I needed that extra push, you know, I was, I, I just always needed an extra push, you know, and that's good because um, I needed all of this work and I, and, and I just needed that help. I just want to see him not make the same mistakes I did and I want to see him kind of on the fast track to running a really profitable business. 
Okay, so the last thing is, you know, it's very important for you to be able to provide um, scholarships to kids, right? And we've talked a lot about how do you do that in a way that doesn't hurt your business model, but allows you to have that heart for the community. So Deluxe is making a donation to plant a seed to pay for an additional six scholarships. And those are represented in this bag by six sets of boxing gear for the oh, kids. Oh, all right, great, that's awesome. You think six more friends to come in. Helping people is hard, but accepting help can be even harder especially when you've spent a lot of your life figuring out how to fend for yourself. But that's why Jose started his gym and why we did everything we could to help it succeed. So there will be a few more kids out there who don't have to go it alone. And if that happens, this was all worth it. I finally realized that all these people are really pushing for me. But uh, at the end of the day, I had to do my share. I'm the owner of Keystone Boxing. When I step in here, I gotta believe that I'm the best owner there is. I'm getting big help from the Small Business Revolution, but it's me who's going to make sure that this gym is successful. On the next episode of Small Business Revolution Main Street, an early learning center with a mission to serve the entire community. Being new to the community, a lot of people don't know that we're here. It's kind of hard. Can the Small Business Revolution team help make them a lasting part of this town? The first thing you have to help is the business. And will the owners learn to value themselves as much as the community does? Right away we said, we've got to rebuild this from scratch. As Jose and millions of small businesses experience every year, launching a business is tough. And things like getting set up properly online can fall through the cracks. Visit deluxe.com slash revolution to learn how the marketing team at Deluxe delivered an online presence with a punch for this startup gym.